All right, y'all, I'm going to show you how I rekeyed the cylinder lock on my car door. When I got my car, somebody had pried into the passenger side lock and damaged it. It wouldn't work. So I went out to pick and pull and I got an extra lock cylinder from a Camry. This is a 1995 Toyota Camry so that I would have the extra pins. These are called pins or reeds or wafers. This is actually a very easy process. I've already taken mine apart and rekeyed it, and I just wanted to show you how I did it. There's a C-clip on the back of it that rests right here, right there. You just take a screwdriver or a small pair of pliers and work that off. It might be a good idea if you take white out and mark the parts as you're taking them off and the housing here so you know which way they go back on. Or take pictures. After you take the C-clip off, this arm comes right off. Before you take it off, notice that it's located right here where this metal part is that's coming up. So you take that right off. Once you take that off, there's a spring right there. It's not under tension, it simply just lifts off. And the two tangs of this spring go on either side of this raised metal part. On the other side of this housing for the lock cylinder, there's a cap. The cap has two areas that are depressed, pressed down, like little tanks, here and here. Put a screwdriver in there and work those up. You have to pull them up in order to loosen this cap so you can take it off on both sides. And then it just works off. Now you're down to the lock cylinder and the housing. To remove this lock cylinder, you have to put a key in. It doesn't matter which key. The key to your car, even though it's not currently coded to this lock cylinder. So the way you get the lock cylinder out is you got to put the key in. So you put the key in and the lock cylinder will come out. This is the housing. These lock cylinders typically have white lithium grease on them and it makes them very gummy. So the pins will be lubricated and they also tend to stay in place with the white lithium grease in there. It was very dirty so I took it apart and cleaned it with brake cleaner to clean all this out and I also cleaned each pin. Um, I don't tend to like to use white lithium grease if I'm going to lubricate something with um, silicone spray in the future and that's what I'm going to do. A couple times a year I use silicone spray to lubricate the locks in my house and in my vehicles and any lock. It's a great lubricant to use. So I wanted to remove all the old white lithium grease. And over time, white lithium grease tends to get very sticky and cakey. So I took it out. So in my case, because I removed all the white lithium grease, these pins will just pop out if I don't hold them down. Now I'm going to remove the key and you'll see these pins. These guys right here start to come up. Those pins are spring-loaded, and that's, that's what the springs look like right there. They're really tiny. You don't want to lose those, and they're very delicate. These pins are numbered one through four. This happens to be a three, if you can see that right there. On Toyotas, there's something called split wafers, or split pins, and this is what they look like. and you'll see those in my lock cylinder. Those split pins are also numbered one through four. So now I'm gonna remove the key and you'll see the pins come up. Again, I have to hold on to mine because they're very loose. You see how they came up? I'm first going to take all of my pins out and then I'll show you how I rekey this lock. When the pin comes out, you have the little spring sitting right there. Do you see that spring? I just take them out and put them next to each other. So I'm going to do that now. All of my pins are out. As you see, I have two split wafers. It's a Toyota thing. Split wafer, split wafer up here. A lock cylinder will have 
a different configuration of pins. I have eight, as you see. Some cars have six, some seven. It just depends. So per the manufacturer, the number of pins to key a lock are different. I just wrote here on a paper towel white outside so I knew which pins go on which side. So I know that these are the correct pins for this particular key. But I'll show you how you can figure out which pins are the correct pins for your key. It's just a matter of finding out which pin, number one through four, fits in which slot. The first thing you do is you put the spring in. And the spring goes right there, drops in that little hole. I'm going to first try a pin that I know doesn't work so I can show you what the pin will look like and what will happen if it's not the right pin. So you slide the pin in. Then you put your key in and watch what that pin does. Retracts down. But as you can see, it's standing up just a little bit at the top there. So the key went in, but now you have to put it in the housing of the lock cylinder and see if that pin is correct. And just as we thought, it isn't because it's catching in this channel right here. It won't turn the lock. So you take that out and you try another pin. If one doesn't work, you just move on to another pin. Now we're going to try the pin that I actually know works. We're going to put that in there. It'll retract down the pin wheel. See how flush that is with that lock cylinder? So the key's in. Now let's put it in our housing and see what happens. The key turns just like it would if you were unlocking your door. So we know that's the right pin for that location. Let's try another one. We're gonna do split pin here for y'all. These are loads of fun because they are difficult to line up. All right, spring goes in. Spring goes in. The best way I've found to put these split pins in is to grab them like this, line them up at the bottom put them in. Now they're lined up properly right now, but they can offset each other and move very easily. So I keep my finger on them, my thumb. I'll just show you for purposes of you seeing what happens. I'm not going to keep my thumb on. We'll see what happens if they'll stay lined up. So the key goes in. Uh, they're not going to stay lined up, so I've got to put my thumb on it. The key goes in, just like that. And see how flush those are to the cylinder lock, those pins? Now the true test is you put the lock cylinder in the housing, and sure enough it turns. So we know that's the right number of pin for that location, but I'll show you what will happen if it's not. Let's try these split pins. See if they work in there. We'll drop those in. Keep my finger on them. Put the key in. They look really close but it's protruding a bit at the bottom. So let's see what happens. Nope. Incorrect pin number. It won't turn. The lock cylinder won't turn. So I take those out. And put back in the ones I know will work. Put the key in again. 
they're sitting flush right there on that lock cylinder. Put the lock cylinder in the housing, turn it, turns like a charm. So what I do now, because I have removed the lubrication from this lock cylinder, and as I said, the pins will fall out on me, I pull my key out just a little bit so I can clear it for the next location to put a pin in. And let's try another pin. First, of course, put the spring in. Grab a pin, put it in. Y'all see how it's like a puzzle? You're just trying to find out which pin, one through four, goes in which location. So now we're gonna put the key in all the way. And you see how that stands up there, right there? So now we're going to put it in the housing. Nope, it doesn't turn because it's not the right pin. So we're going to take that pin out. We're going to put in this pin. Put that key in all the way. See how flush that is? going to put it back in the housing. Sure enough, the key turns. So I won't do any more. You all get the idea now. It's just a matter of trying each pin, one through four, to determine which pin goes in each slot. And I'll tell you that these pins also protrude. So you push them in here at the top. At the bottom, they protrude out. One or two of my pins weren't exactly flush up at the top on the lock cylinder here. And I didn't want to go out to the salvage yard again or pick and pull and get another cylinder lock. So what I did was I used my trusty file and I removed the key and removed the pins that were a problem. So what I did is I filed the top of the pin just a little bit back and forth like this, not aggressively, did a little bit at a time, put it back in the lock cylinder, see if it worked, if it caught, because it will catch if it does if it's not the right pin. That's how I repaired the door lock on my car. It saved me about, at a minimum, $100. Now before I put this door lock back in my car, I'm going to lubricate it with silicone spray. I prefer that over the white lithium grease. So now I'm going to put all the pins in the lock cylinder and I'll show you how it works. All the pins back in, put the key in. See how flush those are? Put it in the housing. Now, I will point out, this area of the lock cylinder goes right here. See how it works? If you do the other side like I just did, it'll go all the way around to where it wants to go. Once you're done recoding or rekeying the lock cylinder, you put it back in the housing, take the key out. First thing I do is I take the cap and I put it on. You want to bend these tangs back in place. I'm not going to do that quite yet because I'm going to lubricate it before I put it all back together. You take your trusty spring here, put it back in its location right there. The arm then goes on like that. And then you put your C-clip on and engage that. What I would recommend is that if you go out to a salvage yard like I did to get a lock cylinder, I would get several. I just got one. And the trouble I ran into is I didn't have some pins that were right, so I had to file them a bit up at the top because they caught on the housing. And whether this procedure of rekeying the lock cylinder will work on your car, I can't tell you. But if your door lock doesn't work, what do you have to lose? 
It's not a difficult process. It's pretty straightforward, and you can save yourself quite a bit of money. And that's how I rekey a lock on a car door. I hope it helps, and happy DIYing.